Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Campbell Talk. And tonight we have the one and only Miss Dr. Donna Singer. And um, if you have not heard this amazing woman, she is just fabulous. I had a, a time when we went to see her perform at a, an event, a fundraising event, um, and she was doing just, she, she's a jazz singer. <laughs> and so it was just amazing to just listen to the, her voice is amazing, music is amazing, and the band she played with, oh my gosh. And um, I'm telling you, it was just a time, a time, okay? And so if you haven't heard of her, I want you to start Googling. Uh, make sure that you go and check her out. We'll put more information later on about where you can find her, where you can look her up. Um, if you need to book her, there will be booking information on her pages as well. And um, so for sure, um, get your friends, get your family, get your girlfriends, get your bros. Um Tell them to come sit and watch. And if they can't sit and watch, make sure you like, share, and share, and share. So this way, everyone can uh, learn about this show and learn about our guest. And also, like I said in every video, make sure you get you a notepad and a pen. Because sometimes inspiration will just jump out at you. And you will need to make a quick note and say, ha ha. I'm going to use this or I'm going to take this advice. But when you learn something, make sure you share it with others so we all can grow as a community and we can support each other. So without further ado, I'll bring on Dr. Donna Singer right after this intro. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. We did it. <laughs> yes, for sure. How are you? I am like amazing. That was such a, a fantastic introduction. I can't wait to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, for sure. So tell us about yourself. Well, it's really easy. Um, I started in the Bronx, New York, born, moved to upstate New York, and was born and raised in a small town called Miles's, where we had cows and pigs and sheep. And believe it or not, I am a, I don't like to say wannabe because I didn't want to be a farm girl. But when I turned seven, my mom decided to put my brother, my sister, my twin, myself into piano lessons. And, um, and it was just absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I love the piano. I took to the piano very, very easily. Um, my piano teacher, though, noticed something very odd about me. She was like, there's something very odd here. And we'd be like, what? When Donna says the note names, she's singing the song C D E F G G G C C C D E E and she was like she's she's singing while she's playing and I just thought that was hilarious I, I, at seven I didn't know I, I just thought I was supposed to do that and then I started singing and playing the piano and then I started singing in um, third grade. My teacher heard me sing and asked me to sing for the class. Fifth 
grade. I'm still singing for the class. My high school reunion, I sang the national anthem at the soccer games. My high school class reunion, I sang a solo. I've been singing all my life. Um, and all because I I went with ABC with, uh, with Mary Had a Little Lamb and all those other great songs and Three Blind Mice. And I, I just kept singing. After I graduated from high school, I went to the New York Academy of Theatrical Arts. And there I met um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, group of individuals who brought me into their off-Broadway production of, um, oh, well, guess we forgot that. <laughs> and, um, and I realized I, I miss singing. The, the thing about the Academy is it was theatrical. They didn't do musicals. They did theater. And, and anybody can easily tell you those are two separate things. Musical and theater are two different things. And I missed it so. Um, I would say a few years after that, I, um, I went to Juilliard, got singing again. My vocal coach was with the New York um, Philharmonic um, Opera Company excuse me, the New York Opera Company and um, out of the Met. And, and I just started singing again, met my husband, Roy Singer, and which is really funny because everybody seems to think that Donna Singer is my stage name. And it's not, it's Donna Singer. I married Roy Singer. I don't know, I guess we've been married about 18 years, I guess. We've been married maybe 20, 22, uh, I don't know. He'll come out, he'll tell us. But we've been married a long time and um, our son Christopher loves to play the guitar and loves to play um, um, his flutes. He's very musically inclined. He has his bowls for his yoga classes. He's very musical playing his bowls. And um, we're just a very strong musical family. Roy is a composer and has written many of my um, wonderful songs. So when he said faith-based community, um, my, my song two years ago was on the charts for nine weeks at number one called Take God's Hand. And mm -hmm. then we released um, Go and Seek the Light, which I was very excited to see played in Europe in um, Italy, um, England, and France. And that just, that just blew me away that um, some, some wonderful Christian songs that my husband and his writing partner wrote were just, were just um, wonderful, wonderful songs. And then um, we now live in Florida where we had the opportunity to meet Ricardo and, um, and some wonderful, wonderful of his friends. And, uh, and I'm here now. I know that was kind of a sketchy roundabout way of what I've gotten myself into, but I think I did pretty good bringing you in. <laughs> that was really awesome. That Thanks. Was awesome. Okay, so, all right. So it seems like you've been singing for a very long yeah. time. Did, long you, time. did you like just wake up one day and just say, this is, this is the genre that I'm going mm -hmm. to sing? Or like, how did you figure mm -hmm. out like where where your voice and where your I talent fit. best Yeah, were? my my mother and my father really um, molded me into jazz. My mother was a very strong Barbra Streisand fan, Nancy Wilson fan, Dinah Washington fan. My 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 um, father also loved Sammy Davis Jr. So I was really ingrained in the Great American Songbook, and for those. For those individuals who are, who are unaware of that songbook, they're very simple, you know, 32 measures, very, very, very simple, fast songs. So I was constantly singing a little ditty just, just off the top of my head. When did I realize this is what I wanted to do? I would say maybe three years before I graduated from high school. Maybe my, um, maybe my sophomore year, I finally started to say, I don't think I want to be a nurse. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I want to be a teacher. And I, and I remember approaching my parents and, um, and they weren't surprised because they'd been molding me since I was seven. But, um, but my mother was very smart. 
she made sure that when I did go to college, I always had a day job to support my acting and my singing. And I've always had a job supporting my acting and my singing. I have a day job now supporting my singing. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, and you do so many things for charity and charity work, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, I like, I like putting on concerts for charity. I like, I like, um, um, I think, I think we all have to give back somehow. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to give back with my voice, but yet how does that help anybody? So I always try and give back with a concert and that the funds of the concert go to after everything is said and done and all is paid, um, the charity has got to come in and, and reap the benefits of that concert. That's what we hope to achieve. That's amazing. What would you say has been your greatest inspiration to date besides, you know, like I know most people say, oh, my husband or, you know, my yeah. wife. Yeah. Something like that. He's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, I know, I know. Um, for for me, for me, I am extremely um, spiritual. I'm extremely <laughs> religious. I played the piano for 17 years at First Baptist Church, and my husband played the organ right next to me. So oh, we man. we 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 glean everything from Jesus Christ. I, I am not afraid or ashamed. I love saying that, but um, our strength comes from him. Um, Roy and I aren't very religious. We do not attend church. We do not. Um, we're not. We're not religious in what some people would say. You, you, you don't meet the standards that we hold high, but yet we can turn around and do a hit song called Take God's Hand. Right. So don't tell us your definition of what it's supposed to be. So where do I get my inspiration from? Um, um, I wish I could say it, it all comes from the, him who gives me life. But one of my biggest inspirations is Michael Jackson and Prince. Now those are in the generation that I grew up. I'm not gonna tell you what generation that is, but I grew up with Michael Jackson and Prince and it kills me that they're not with us anymore. Right. And so for my shows, I, I, I always try to sing Purple Rain, maybe not with the orchestra or with the concert band, but with the trio, I always try to sing Purple Rain because I just, that that musician was amazing. Prince, who can, who can who, I can't even say it and anything after that. Whitney yes. Houston, I mean, it just it's just like all of our wonderful, great role models that I grew up with, and I'm gonna say you too, yeah. uh, were, who, are, who are past and gone, I glean from them. I'm just like, okay, okay. I, I don't know how to how to bring this song across. So yeah, I go back and listen to it again. I do. I want to see. I'm, I'm going to do Purple Rain, Donna Singer style, but I need to give homage and 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 grace and gratefulness to Prince. I have to. So we did a show over in um, um, Coconut Creek, and um, and I was doing Purple Rain. And a person, she she took out her phone, and 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 she she turned on the the the, the flashlight. Purple rain, purple rain. I was like, is that fantastic? <laughs> now, where did she get that inspiration from? Where did she get that inspiration from? And now, whenever we do it, I've got my phone and I'm ready, be because it's one moment we can all be together for one yes. song, okay? It's not jazz per se, and, and it's not black per se, but it is a song we can all bond with. Mm -hmm. And when she did that, I was like, and I, I do it now all the time. I, I, I do not touch Purple Rain. That's what it needed. A, a little bit of I love you, Prince, right now. I love you. And I, hey. and I you've got a song about Michael Jackson. Let me know, I'll sing it. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> for sure. Do okay. you find do you find that it was uh it, it was challenging for you to pick for for you as like a woman being in this jazz arena uh, and and were there were there any like uphill battles or challenges that you had yes, to overcome there are there are some challenges be, because because and I don't know why but it just seems as if male musicians make 
almost 60% more than women, maybe more. And they're just now saying that about sports too. Isn't that a big thing on sports yeah. now? And and they're they're finding out across the gamut, across the board, we we are paid such a small, small amount. And also I, I, I find that to be the uphill battle. And if you'll just allow me to give you two. The second one is the finances from streaming. Oh. My song was number one for nine weeks. This last song I had number one, the marvelous, magical, amazing Mrs. Claus was number two, one for two weeks. Do you know I got $7 for that? Oh, wow. $7 from streaming. Spotify, Apple, they don't pay the artists. And when Roy, for his um, ASCAP, um, that's, um, that's a, um, uh, a society for um, music um, composers. His hmm. check was three dollars, and so there's something very wrong. We we want to be um, we want to be transparent, of course, but don't you know that back in the '60s or '70s, if you had a number one hit for nine weeks, you made it. You made it. You you were. You weren't going places. You were there. You were there. <laughs> and here now in 2023, 22, yes, we had the pandemic. Yes, I get that. I get that that changed things. But I only got $7 from Spotify and Apple to iTunes. That's it. Because I get a penny. Let me see if I can figure put this in perspective for you. I get a half of a penny for every dollar twenty someone buys a song. A half of a page. Yeah. That is so low. That's what do you mean low? That's that's like that's nothing. That's nothing. And we're trying to figure it out. And we're trying to bring it to Congress's attention. But Congress has got so many things that they want to talk about first. Yeah. But um but yeah a half a penny for every one song I sell. And a song, I don't know if you know this on Apple, is 99 cents or $1.29. Mm -hmm. So even if it was a penny, who got the other $1.28? Right. Where does that go? It, it, well, that, that then has to go to the musicians, go to me paying everybody. But yeah. So if you weren't aware of that, I'm glad I made you aware. It's pretty sad. That is pretty, yes, for sure. It is pretty yeah. sad. It's sad. Um, yeah. Do you, um, with all of the different genres that are out right now, mm -hmm. and I know that, you know, you know, hip hop and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, salsa, merengue, all these different uh, reggaeton and all yeah. this stuff like hitting right now. Um, do you feel like jazz still has like a stronghold in there or like, is, do you feel like it's, it's, it's still like a growing genre mm -hmm. or? Is it shrinking? Um, every time I want to say I think it's shrinking, I go to a city and they say jazz jam session. <laughs> Just when I think there's no jazz, there's jazz. Esmeralda Spalding is a wonderful bass bass player. I don't know if you know her, but um, she's much, much younger than I. And she's won, I think, several Grammys. And she has just taken jazz and said, all right, I'm bringing it to my generation. It's weird. It's almost as if every generation has that one or two people who will do it. And Samara Joy, mm. she just won a Grammy for Best New Artist of the Year for jazz. So you sit there and say, well, wait a minute. I, jazz is shrinking. Jazz is shrinking. Oh, Samara just won for jazz. So. I want to say that every time I think of drinking, I shut my mouth because someone it's as if it's if it, I know this is going to sound really crazy. I told you I'm religious. Don't forget. Um, <laughs> it's as if a prophet comes. I'm not saying a prophet is a religious sector, but a prophet comes as Miranda Spaulding, her generation, my generation, Cassandra Wilson, Samara Joy is Samara Joy is 22 years old and won two Grammys for jazz last year. She's oh, wow. the next generation. 
So every so every time I think, oh, you know what? This is uh, it's not going to be. It's like it's dying. It's a dying breed. A prophet comes now. Who now? Samara Joy. Samara Joy will have it for the next ten years. Esmeralda Spalding. But you may remember, and I know I don't know how old you are, and don't tell me. But remember Wynton Marsalis? Yes. Okay, he was ours. So there's always someone <laughs> who yeah. comes along who just puts jazz out there on the map, and then we kind of goes quiet a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then boom, Samara Joy. Um, we're just like, how did she win that? She won a Grammy and took it from Bruno Mars. How is that possible? A jazz artist. But so, no, I don't think we're getting small. No, I don't. But I will tell you this. I do find myself not singing as much great American songbook now. Like I said, I sing Purple Rain or I'll mm -hmm. sing a Whitney Houston song. I, I love Tracy Chapman. But then uh -huh. I'll turn around. Yes, there you go. <laughs> And, and I I love it. I'm do I'm doing. You you come down to sunrise. I'm doing a show in sunrise, and we're doing all these great songs. And all I keep saying to people is, you, I'm not saying no to jazz. I'm saying yes to everything else, and that we can merge. That's what I think. Okay. You, you know Tracy Chapman. I don't know her, but I love you her. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. But did she do to to um to music? Wasn't she amazing? Oh, I, yeah. I, I I love I, her. Yeah. No reason to stay here. <laughs> Every time I go to karaoke, that's my first song. Where do you go to karaoke? I haven't been in a while. I used to go to this place in uh, where did we go? In Delray Beach. There used oh. to be. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, this was a couple I years ago. Del Rey. I went they, to Delray, um, right by the library. Like I'd park at the library and then walk a couple blocks down. I think there was a karaoke. And and that's another thing. Like people, people who sing jazz, they're like, don't do karaoke. I do karaoke. Why don't I do karaoke? It's music. Right. And, it's it. fun. and I right. used to do it when I lived in New York too. We used to go do karaoke quite frequently. And every yeah. time we had, it was like this is it's it. This is it's it. Fun. Did you do <laughs> Nina Simone feeling good? No, no, no. Oh, I just, that would uh, be great for you. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's like when you go as a group, like everybody's picking and whatever. So yeah, yeah. it's not really just you performing. It's like you start singing, yeah, yeah. everybody starts screaming. So yeah, you know, yeah, it, it's great. It's just great. Okay. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> What do you have uh, that's coming up? Um, yeah, um, I have three shows that are coming up. One is with the concert band. That's a 102-piece orchestra. Mm -hmm. And that is February 17th and 18th in Boynton. Then I have a um, jazz uh, show at All That Jazz Cafe. That is um, February 10th. So I have February 10th, 17th and 18th, and then March um, March um, 17th, I have my big band, which is an 18-piece orchestra. We're doing a um, free concert in the park. Which part? I like which oh, the, uh, no, that's good. I will let you know. I will let you know. All of these things you'll, you'll, you'll be hearing about on Facebook. And also, okay. please go to www.donna-singer.com and please put your email in there and I'll put you on my email list. I have a very modest email list, but people just want to know, like you said, when it's free, then I definitely tell people because you could bring a chair, you could bring the kids, you could bring, they're running around, you're listening to music. It's in a park. It's so nice. And also, that's another way we give back, right? Yeah. To, do a, to do a free concert. A community, too. Yeah, that would be down here in a place called um, Coral Springs. So okay. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of South Florida-ish, from West Palm to Miami. You just got to have to catch me where you can. But I'm definitely, I will definitely give you the info if you could put it on your, your site. Oh uh, yeah, anything that you send me um, that Thank the you. community can have access to for sure. Okay. Uh, I know sometimes you know, like, uh, like I mentioned, the the genre, of the music that's out right now, it's a lot different than it's a music lot different. You listen to in the eighties and the nineties, right? In I know, 80s. right? 
You so, mean the 50s and the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? No, I mean, if you really think about it, Sammy Davis Jr. is born, I think, in 1913. Mm. Is that, uh, we have no concept of that. Yeah. So jazz, you're thinking 70s, 80s. I'm not thinking 70s. I'm singing 50s, 60s. And then Tracy is about 1998. And then Prince is 1980s. See, we're just, yeah. it's all music. What do you Sorry. listen to? I am very eclectic. So I listen okay. to a bit of everything. everything. Right. Uh, if I had to pick one particular genre, I absolutely love um Black folk gospel. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I, oh, I, I, I I can deal with a lot of like the uh you know the new age stuff. I know the, contemporary uh, Christian music. Yeah, I, I, I wow. can get with that, but I love me some black folks gospel. Mahalia Jackson, Surly Caesar, yes. Kirk Franklin. <laughs> you no, know, we just gotta like hold the note a little bit longer. I know. And yeah. it was really oh, well, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so weary. Ah, you you know, gotta like, love it. Did you play an instrument? Uh, no. I mean, oh, well, okay. I used to sing in the youth choir in New York. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. I was just listening to old Negro spirituals. And, mm. um, and as, I, as I'm listening, um, go down Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And all I kept thinking was, I was just like, I, I, I like a tear came to my eye. So for mm -hmm. you to say that, that's absolutely, that just valid, validation that I was supposed to listen to that. That was for great. Sure. I, I, was, yeah. uh, I was talking to my son uh, recently about like, you know, social topics like immigration and mm -hmm stuff and things that are going on and we were talking about um like black history month coming up and, and yeah. kind of what's going on with our history being like stripped from us and that kind of yeah. stuff and so part of it we were talking about um you know formerly enslaved people who um use music as a way of communicating yes. and so yes. and and so when you get into some of those you know that that those draws and those sways and mm. and a lot of those holding those notes, they they carry a lot with them because you know when you when you come from a people who have been you know enslaved and beaten and right. broken, and, broken. And, yeah, and sometimes all they could do was cry out. Right. It it. it connects with you on a whole different level. It sure so does. We were talking about that and talking about how, you know, in music, we use music during the slave during slavery to sure. give directions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to teach lessons, to, mm -hmm. to 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 let other people know what time the Underground Railroad was about and to depart. Right. <laughs> and, and 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 also was a, a way of just kind of like, you know, finding comfort and and peace and, mm -hmm. and to 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 hug yourself in a way, right? You right, know, right. when Mahalia sang, mm -hmm. oh wow, it was like just she just wrapped all around you and sang. I know, <laughs> I know. So it was it's just, so sad. I miss I miss those Christmas albums with yeah. the hymns. You yes. know, go tell it on the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know that would be on everybody's Christmas album. It wasn't Santa Baby. It was go tell it on the mountain. You know, wow, that's amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. those those definitely do hold people a lot. And yeah. folks, I have. Uh, Don, Dr. Donna Singer's um, uh, website up on the screen so you can see it is Donna Singer uh, hyphen or slash mm -hmm. Donna hyphen slash singer. <laughs> You're <laughs> just a mess. Be quiet. Right. Like, www.donna-singer.com. <laughs> there you go. Dash. There you go. Uh, I'd say yeah. the dash because um 
That's what they well, told we me. know it is a dash, but you know, these folks these days are now saying dash, dash. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. It's so it's so it's so scary now with critical thinking and critical um learning. I I just I just don't get it. I just don't yeah. get it. Where and and I have to beg my parents to do the right thing. It, because we had black history in the church. That's mm -hmm. where we went to go to all the programs. We didn't go to the programs at the school. We went to the programs at every different church would have a black history program. Please don't stop them. Now they're more critical than ever. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, and, and that's a way that we can continue to share our music, share a bill community mm -hmm. and, and, and just kind of like, you know, when we talk about this village, this village need to be be more uh, organized and, uh, and yeah. be more selective and yeah. inclusive and engaging. And I think that we can do that. So I think even though a lot of stuff is happening politically, we still have, you know, we still there. There's still a lot going on locally and nationally. Locally, so, that's exactly so for sure. Yeah, that's exactly. And, and also, music was a way of just really kind of like leading the activism, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, during, you know, during a lot of those protests and stuff like that, you know, oh, mamas would start singing. That's right. They were singing. And, they were singing in the cotton oh. fields. They weren't just. They were singing in the birthing rooms. They they were singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. So, uh, I mean, it brings a whole different meaning to when you've right. done all you can and right. you just right. say, right? It's just right. and and uh, just just to give you another another um just a full circle here, just to go full circle. Um, Slam Allen is a blues singer who who the blues won't die, the blues won't die, mm -hmm. jazz won't die. I think yeah that we're trying to get all of these different genres and and takes on music, and that's wonderful. Go ahead, but we're not going to die. Yeah. And the blues will continue to live on and jazz will continue. And, um, and what was I just, and, and you said reggae tone. I love it. I love oh, it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love reggae. Are you kidding me? Bob Marley. You know, what, you know, what, what has been really good to is that, you know, gospel music has been really been able to take elements of those and just yeah. put in it. And like a, Put a little Jesus on the jazz. Switch little... that around. Switch that around. Jazz didn't. I mean, I mean, gospel didn't. God, no, no. Switch that around. The music is taking it from the gospel, <laughs> not gospel from the music. That's it. Is music. There you is go. The yes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, just like yeah. yes. That okay. is true. That is You're true. Joy. You're a joy. When you, look at, when you look at like Whitney Houston and stuff like that, she pulled mm -hmm. a lot of her gospel roots into a always, lot of like, always. And yeah. if you go back and even like Brian McKnight, mm -hmm. um, a lot of his um, mu uh, music and some a lot, a lot of his stuff from gospel music too, yeah. Fantasia, and a lot of uh, a lot of them That's do it. a lot so. of gospel. And and can I tell you, guilty, you know when when I'm holding a note, I'm not just holding a note. Well, 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 well. I know I'm not gonna go, well. <laughs> you know, I'm like, don't, don't tell me. I got to get from E to F. Give me a second. <laughs> right? I get there. But yeah, yeah, I love Whitney Houston. I try, I tried to sing Whitney Houston, but that girl in her range, it's just like, oh, I love her. I um, love her. Yeah. I really do. I really do. Yeah. Also, I did. I did want to share with you. You said, well, what, what, what were your upcoming shows? So those are my upcoming shows. But I do have another gospel song coming out March 1st called God is Love. And I'll okay. send it to you. I don't know if you can have any way of send, playing it, but um, it's called God is Love. And um, I could get it for us, but I, I didn't think of that fast enough. It's probably too late now. But um, but it's our newest one. And, and I think it's you hit on it. All we were told to do, all we were charged to do was to love. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself, and God is love. Is just oh, I just got a goosebump. Okay, <laughs> so well. <laughs> so, so, um, actually, what's coming up for us is mm -hmm. on February 29th at okay. the United Methodist Church of the Palm Beaches. Oh, my church! 
we are going to be hosting uh it's a thursday afternoon we're okay. going to be hosting the black health summit and expo um wow. from 3 to 7 p.m at the church wow. in the gathering hall it's called or the gathering, yeah, gathering hall yeah gathering uh, place yeah so um yeah it's free and it's open to the public so we would love for everyone to come out and be a part of it and so look there is an event link going around so for sure um oh, for sure. yeah um do you have any cds or i don't think people are using cds these days i um, know i know but but ready for know, this? Records, are making, records are actually making a comeback it's i like, know I was like, what? what? <laughs> so um, I do have, well, my song comes out, God is Love. And then um, what we have is we, we took five of the gospel songs that we released as a single, put them all on one album, and that comes out March 1st also. So okay. it won't go for Grammy contention because each individual song has already has already gone for Grammy contention. So it knocks us out of the ballpark there. But God is Love is new, and we hope that that will bring us to uh, to Grammy contention. I am a member of the Recording Academy, and, um, and I'm a member of the one where people say, I'd like to thank the Academy. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, um, so we do have CDs, and we sell them at shows. I am amazed. I'm going to Rome in um, the end of June, beginning of July to sing, and I'll be singing in Vatican City. So okay. that's, that's really- On my bucket list. Yeah, huh? The singing in Vatican City part, but you know, go to Vatican City one day. I know, um, that's, a, that's a dream come true. And then yeah. we'll be in New York. We're, we're, we're slowly coming back from COVID. My husband and I both had COVID and we had a bad strand of it. It wasn't, it wasn't fun. It was not fun. And it's still, I, I'm still tired. I, I wish people could see that that was, that, I, I hate that people are saying it didn't exist. Right. It existed. <laughs> I had it. You know, I'm pretty sure I felt bad. So, right. so we're, we're slowly getting ourselves together, but what I'll do is, um, Richardo, I'll put a, um, a, um, you you'll join my email list, okay? Oh, yes, Is I'm that okay? Be, I would really yeah, yeah. like that. I will do it. I will do it afterwards. Thank uh, you. After the show is over, um, for sure. Uh, is there anything else that's coming up, or, or any places that you'll be making appearances? That um, you, you mean know? besides Rome and New York? Let uh -huh. me think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing. We no, we're we're we basically are the three that we're doing in February and March, and then June and July. It's it's not slow moving. I think my career is doing beautifully, but um, but then I see others that are like doom doom doom. But you know, I'm like, I, I feel old sometimes. <laughs> what can I say? I feel mighty old sometimes. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, about that. you're so sweet. <laughs> don't think I won't. I won't. I won't. All right. Well, thank so, you. Thank you, Richardo. Thank you so much. This problem. has been a joy. This is really amazing. And I'm really glad. And again, uh, I'm going to say it like how the lady said it www.donna. Dash. Dash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Goodbye, folks. It's been fun. <laughs> dot com. And, um, you know, please go on, uh, check out the website, and also make sure you drop mm -hmm. your emails into the yeah. email. Yes, please this do. This way you can know please, what's please happening. Um, let's, uh, she's a local artist here in Florida, in yeah. South Florida, in Palm Beach County. Yeah, um, so hours, sure, yeah. uh, you know, continue to support, follow, share. Um, uh, her music is amazing, and um, I'm sure, I'm sure they can find some of your music. Like, if they, oh, of course, Spotify, uh, Apple, I want every platform. I'm just not getting paid. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Oh, for sure. So, folks, if you do have a chance to take a few minutes, just check it out. Um, you know, hit up the likes, you know, that kind of stuff. Hear it around. And uh, if you're on there, you know, like purchase, purchase it, you know, purchase it. Thank um, you. Thank um, you. Buy a song or two, buy the mm -hmm. album. 
that would be great. Uh, it's much easier these days than yeah. Yeah. remember yeah. when we had to go to the store to get the CD to put it Actually, in. Actually, the they asked me, did I want my dance band boogie um big band album in Walmart? And I turned it down. I was like, Walmart? And Walmart. they wanted to put it in a bin with other CDs. And I was like, oh, I know those bins. No, I don't want to be in there. <laughs> you walk past those bins all the time. I was like, see, they make cars, car radios now. It's yeah, serious. right. And they say, leave Garrett, leave Garrett. <laughs> Uh, but the, but they, uh, I think that they are trying to, uh, you know, they say what was what is old is new again. So right, I, right. I see, I see a lot more shows now. Like people are wearing like the walk with the headphones and the Walkman. Right. Holes, uh, right. What is that? Also, it is, it's a coming back. Next thing we're going to be having Walkmans and roller skates. What's going on? I, roller skates <laughs> never left. And I have a roller skating rink right down the road for me, and I'm just amazed it's by that. Booming right now. It's booming, and and I'm not talking about um, what are, what are the ones? Remember in the '80s we had the four wheels. Yes. And they were they were straight streamlined um skating. What were <laughs> they? Huh? The the inline was it inline skating. Inline skating. Yeah, I'm not talking about those. People are roller skating. Mm hmm. All right, my love. I'll say good night. Yeah. You just you just be blessed. Thank you so much. We're talking no, about skating. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, www.donna.singer.com. Please go on there. <laughs> Donna dash singer Donna, dot com. Dash Donna singer, singer, the singer, the singer com. Donna. Donna is the singer. <laughs> Bye, Ricardo. <laughs> Bye. The talk's I'm in the studio now. All right, no problem.